he first took over as coach at Carlton, well, they weren't much of a side. And they'd lost four games in a row. So after the game, Barassi said to the players, right, into the coach's room. He was pretty angry. So he got the players to gather around and he said, right, we're going right back to the beginning, right back to the origin of the game, to the basics. And he bent down and picked up a football and he said, this is a football. And there was a dumb ruckman amongst the players. He said, hang on, coach, you're going too quickly. Now, I don't want to mention the ruckman's name, but it so happens that our next larrikin happens to be Percy Jones. Now, if you can believe Perse, the umpires always gave him a raw deal. I wasn't sure just which one will be paid. Peter Jones going through some actions there. Peter Jones, one of the most colourful characters in the Carlton team. Jones, he never won a Brownlow, but by golly, he came mighty close to winning an Oscar. Thompson trying to push Percy Jones back. Jones looking for a free kick. Well, when I turned up there, we were on the way up into a good side, successful side, and I got it, you know, I, I love the game and exuberant, and I, I love the scoring goals, and uh, it all became part and parcel then, and, uh, and um, you know, I, I uh, enjoyed myself playing football. Well, you used to clap your hands and mm -hmm. do all those antics. Was that uh, put on or what? Spontaneous. No. Spontaneous, Spontaneous, yeah, spontaneous so. Big Percy had a faithful sidekick at Prince's Park, Adrian Gags Gallagher. The duo has a lot in common. Both are popular publicans and both can get themselves into a spot of bother. In fact, trouble seems to follow them wherever they go. He said to me that uh, he carried you in the hotel business. Big Wade. Yeah. Uh, 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 he, he said was, he was the brains of the show. He was, he was in, I did the hard work. I did all the, the, the kegs, etc., etc. and Adrian was more into PR. He was, he was heavily in PR gags. I was at home and uh, was going to a final and he said, well, you know, like, we're going together, aren't we? And I said, certainly. He said, but uh, our, the lady who was going to look after the hotel was going to be a bit late. Is it all right if I lock up the hotel and, uh, you know, come over and uh, pick her up and out we go? And I said, well, how long did she say where she was going to be? He said, an hour. I said, well, that should be all right. I think we get away with that. So we, uh, we got out the ground. We're sitting out there in the, out of Waverley, it was. And you know how it happens with, uh, you know, when it comes over the loudspeaker, we'd, we'd dock the so-and-so, please <laughs> ring, you know, whatever. Yeah. Well, we're sitting there and, and, uh, and it said, uh, would Adrian Gallagher or Peter Jones come to the ground manager's office? And oh, I've looked at him and I said, do you hear that? Yeah. Uh, he said, yeah. I said, what have you done? So we've gone to the ground managers and we've had to go back, leave the football. The police had gone through the place because there was a customer there that came in, you know, the regular on a Saturday. He's gone in the door. Peter hasn't locked the hotel up properly. He's gone through the door, thought uh, the lady who was working behind the bar, he waited half an hour for a drink actually, which yeah. wasn't unusual, but waited, thought the lady had been uh, robbed, stabbed, murdered or whatever, and went over and did the right thing, went over to Russell Street and rang the police. Well, they took a dim view of it, Lou. Yeah. And uh, we ended up in the county court over that. was Peter Jones's effort of closing the hotel, leaving a door open. We went to the county court and the judge, Judge Driscoll, I think it was, said, you boys better choose between hotels and football. And you choose football? Well, I did. He said, this Adrian Gallagher, did he? He's done <laughs> it again. <laughs> in 1970, Gags and Percy helped Carlton win a premiership. The final siren sparking a long night of celebrating. <laughs> Next morning, the boys were still hearing sirens. We're heading up. Ligon Street and uh, Adrian, uh, there was a, a light that changed from orange to red and he didn't have an, uh, you know, the time to pull up so he, he went, he careered through the red light. And all of a sudden this uh, uh, motorcycle policeman came roaring around out of nowhere and said, you know, could you pull over? So he said, uh, young gags, out you get. So I've got out of the car and immediately Peter Jones being the, uh, the bush lawyer, you know, would have uh, took him half an hour to uh, <laughs> explain the case. Um, got out of the car and the policeman told him, get in the car, Peter, that's not, uh, I'll talk to Adrian, thanks. And he asked me a very difficult question. He said, well, I know you've had a great day and everything like that. Would you like to leave your car here and catch a cab to the uh, Princess Park or would you like a police escort? Well, I didn't have a think about it, Lou, and I chose for the uh, police escort. So they escorted us from all the way up, up Lygon Street to the Carlton Footy Ground, which was very decent of them. Well, we went up to uh, Princess Park and there was a lot of people there and we're driving in, following the police in. I drove a lot better this time too. And then, uh, you won't believe it, Peter James has put his head out, 
yelled out to the policeman, could we just have a siren before, as we go into the ground? <laughs> well, he's obliged and uh, was quite, just capped off the day, beating yeah. Collingwood and having uh, the escort to the ground. Oh, terrific blokes. Now, there was I a I hope they're in the police force still. Pardon? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> when Gags and Percy abdicated their roles as clown princes of football, the heir apparent was waiting in the wings. Jacko. <laughs> what a character. <laughs> what a 